This video is going to be a little basic and a little acidic because today we're talking about pH. Now this video is not sponsored by Eric Hill, but they sent me a sample of their pH meter to test out. So I'm going to use that as an example throughout the video. What is pH? Well, specifically pH stands for potential hydrogen, meaning the amount of hydrogen ions that are in a solution of liquid. But without getting too complicated, it's a measurement of acidity or alkalinity on a scale of zero to 14. Distilled pure water sits in the middle at seven, so it's a very neutral medium. But more importantly, how does pH affect beer? Well, let's dive into that right now. There are several points in the brewing process where you may want to take a pH reading of the wort solution or the final beer solution, but I'm going to touch on the top three most important reasons that pH affect beer. First and foremost is the water source that you have. Now the pH of the water source that you're using is not necessarily the best insight into how to adjust the water chemistry, but if you're using a water source that has a pH of 6 versus a pH of 10, there is a large discrepancy there. It's usually due to the minerals that are in solution in the water, and I've touched on that a little bit more in the water chemistry video that I will link below in the description. Now that you have a pH reading on the source water that you're using in your brewery, as well as water report, I hope, the next and probably the most important step to measure pH in the process is the mash. The mash is the step in the brewing process where you take the milled grain and mix it with hot water and extract the sugar that's inside. More specifically, you're breaking down the carbohydrates that are inside of the grain into smaller bite-sized chunks so that the yeast can consume it and ferment it later on in the brewing process. But how is that done? Well, the grain has naturally occurring enzymes in it, which fight off chunks of the large carbohydrates, which are essentially just large chains of sugars, and break them off into little bite-sized pieces. These enzymes work most effective in a range of 5.2 to 5.6 pH. There are other factors at play here, but for this case, we're going to focus on the enzymatic conversion of the carbohydrates in the mash. In that band of 5.2 to 5.6, the enzymes are in an ideal pH range to break down the most carbohydrates and get the best extraction out of the grain. Generally speaking, on a homebrew scale, you're going to let that mash sit for about 60 minutes at a controlled temperature, whatever your mash temperature is. After that 60 minutes and after you perform a Vorloff or essentially recirculating the wort so it clarifies, you want to pull a sample of that wort off and cool it down to room temperature to then take your mashed pH reading. And if you're in that 5.2 to 5.6 pH range, you're good to go. If you're not in that 5.2 to 5.6 range, then you should throw your entire brewery in the trash. And no, you should definitely not do that. But the next time you brew, you should adjust your mash with salts or acids in order to bring that pH in range. So if your pH is a little high, such as 5.8 or 5.9, you wanna adjust with more acids to bring that pH level down. If your pH is low on the 5.0, 4.9 end of the spectrum, you wanna use a base in order to bring that pH right into the range. Now this takes a little playing around with, but there's some good rules of thumbs out there on different forums and different websites online that you can dive into, or again, revisit my water chemistry video that I put out on the channel. And now the third most important part of the process to measure pH. Now this is something that I don't personally do because I've been brewing beer for a long time, that I have a pretty consistent process and I'm pretty decent at sensory, being able to tell how the beer finished out, but taking a pH sample of the finished beer is an important metric to track if you wanna have consistent beer results. So the final pH of the beer is something that drastically affects the way that the beer is presented. So this is affected by the mash pH, the wort pH that you start with, the way that you boil, and the yeast that you use. All of these things could alter the final pH of the beer, but the final pH of the beer could be anywhere between the three pH range for a sour beer to five, five and a half for a more basic beer. If the pH of the beer finished a little more basic or a little more acidic, then there's something else in the process that maybe wasn't ideal and you can go back and readjust it the next time that you brew the beer so that it falls right in the range that you want it to be. But it really comes down to the style of beer that you're brewing and your preference for the outcome of that style of beer. So let's see how these work. This video is not sponsored by Eric Hill, but they did send me a discount code for 10% off one of these pH meters. Uh, I'll link it in the description below and it'll be good for about three weeks. So if you need a pH meter, jump on there and grab one. So this particular pH meter comes in a pretty nice box with a separate carry-in case on the inside. There's a little instruction manual, 
uh, 4.0, 6.86, and 9.18 pH solution to calibrate the pH meter. So this is the pH meter, and there's also a little vial of storage solution. Let's turn it on and see how it works. So the pH meter needs to be stored in the storage solution so that it keeps this probe nice and healthy. The first thing you want to do is to calibrate this pH meter. So you'll hold down the calibration button and it'll call for the 4.0 solution. You'll then pull out this buffer solution and you'll hold it in here until it begins to calibrate and it tells you when it's done. Then you'll do it with each one of these and your pH meter will be calibrated. When you go to test the pH of a sample of wort, you want to make sure that it's cooled down to room temp. Even though this has auto correction, uh, you still want to make sure that it's cooled down. This has a minimum and max line, so you want to make sure that the sample doesn't go below or above those two lines and make sure that you have a small glass to keep the sample in. So as a side-by-side -side comparison of two mediums that we want to test, we've got Austin City Water here and some of my coffee. So first, let's test the city water. We're going to put the pH meter in, swirl it around, and let it equilibrate. So straight out of the tap, it looks like we're getting a reading of 9.47 at 18.9 degrees Celsius or 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. For the coffee, it looks like we're getting a pH around 5.26 at 27.5 degrees Celsius or 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Give it a little rinse, dry it off <laughs> without touching the bottom of the probe and put it back in the pH storage solution cap. Go ahead and turn it off. So there you go, that's pH and how it affects beer. If you don't already, go out and grab a pH meter. It definitely makes brewing beer way more consistent and you have dated the track and that's always good. Cheers.